I mean, my journey has been very difficult, and um, I had to I had to show charismatic commitment. Mm. I was very committed to where I want to get to. Mm. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a matter of I need to become a DP. It, it, it meant I needed to be the best I am at that time. So whether I'm a camera assistant, I needed to be the best. Whether I'm a focus puller, I needed to be the best. Whether I'm a production assistant, I need to be the best at what I do at that time. I, I've brought in a couple of people and I always work from a point of commitment. How committed are you to this? What have you done to show that you're committed to the course? So I want somebody who, like I'll ask basic questions. Do you have somebody that you look up to? Do you have a favorite cinematographer? Do you know rental companies? What is your favorite camera? Lenses. Let's talk about the basics of wanting to become a cinematographer. What kind of lighting do you want? You know, like mm. what commitment have you shown? Hello there, my name is Marcus Bobasella and welcome to another exciting episode of The Film Biz Show. The show where we delve into industry professional minds to discover their insights about the landscape of the film and television industry, both locally and internationally. If you're tuning in for the first time, please subscribe to this channel, like, click the share button and comment. And we're sure you're going to love this installment. Today we're joined by someone who translates the script and director's vision into a motion picture. Having graduated from AFTA, this filmmaker has made it his mission to create stylized visuals with the work he does. Passionate about storytelling and cinematography and engaging lighting, his most recent works include Yolanda is Swagger, Mother of All, The Life of Mendoza as a director of photography, and The Kings of Joburg Season 2, and Josie Movie as a camera operator. Everyone, please welcome the phenomenal Lesiba Dan Tefu. Welcome, brother. <laughs> Thanks for coming to our show, man. It's a pleasure Thank to you for here, coming man. to our show. Yeah, man. Uh, how are you doing this Joburg, uh, I mean, this uh, Sunday evening? Yeah, I'm doing great. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, it's just mm. it's my day off after a six day week. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a hectic week and yeah. um, today I've just been chilling. Yeah, I know so you guys are... Probably the only thing I'm doing today. Interesting, man. Yeah. I know you're currently in uh, the um, the middle of a shoot. It's a yeah, four week yeah. shoot. Yeah. Five week. Five week. Yeah. How's that going? It's going all right. Yeah. It's got its challenges, mm. um, but I'm excited um, about the outcomes um mm. i think i'm doing i'm doing some exceptional my best work yet mm. and um yeah you'll you'll see it in very soon yeah yeah it definitely is exciting times yesterday i mean i got a call from some colleagues and, and apparently there were uh, um there's a new award awards you know award ceremony that's out i think it's a national film and television awards yeah i was i was surprised man I like it seems like it as well. you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like our space is just opening up you know um, yeah. Uh, yeah but but funny i mean when i looked at all the nominations and all of that i i could be wrong but i had i did not see any shout out for you know our our you know cinematographers and the people who yeah, yeah so uh, i hope i'm wrong but uh south africa you're doing well but we need more representation <laughs> for our, our men's uh, behind the scenes you know but bro i mean after it's a school that's associated with forming some of the best filmmakers we have in the country mm -hmm. do you feel that it helped craft you know the kind of creative that you are today you know in the industry yeah, it, it, it was my birth for the love of cinematography. Yeah. I had no clue what cinematography was until I went to AFTA. In fact, I went to AFTA to go study music, film scoring. Interesting. Yeah. Well, you used to make beats. Um, yeah, I used to make beats. For real? Okay. Home. You know, I really wanted to become a superstar rapper. Yeah, you were my then, dude. I was that guy too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, you know, I, I watched a couple of movies like Coach Carter. Oh, yeah. And, and I just loved the score. Like, I loved how, like, the music made me more engaged in the film. And mm. I decided, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to put music on films. Um, and I went to AFTA and I had to choose in my first year, I had to choose four disciplines. Mm -hmm. So music happened to be one of them and cinematography happened to be. What I found was that music was so hard for me because I had to learn the theory of music. Yeah, man. And I had no clue about the theory. All I knew was Fruity Loops, man. Yeah, yeah like, you know how it is. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Make yeah. us bangers. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't yeah. know the theory of music. Mm. Um, 
And what I found when I went to my cinematography class, yeah. it just came easy. Mm. Um, and I excelled more in it. I mm. ended up dropping music and just jumping onto the side of cinematography. Yeah, it's always a challenge to kind of make those life changing you know for someone yeah. it just seems like oh you just chose a different subject yeah but for you because i know that feeling i, was, I really you held on vision, to it you yeah. know what i'm saying <laughs> and it's like oh man you know let's try what i'm really good at you yeah, know? yeah yeah so it's kind of interesting but i mean coming from tembisa i'm sure it was a culture shock you know stepping Definitely. into after um how was how how did you find that you know man yeah. oh man oh man uh, um it was I'm first generation filmmaker in my family. And yeah. You know? I like the way you put it, dog. You're first generation. Your kids are going to be in that. Yeah. I love that, bro. So yeah, my yeah, kids sure, sure. are. <laughs> so um, I didn't have any idea of like what the film, you know, what the film world is about. Mm. And I found that like my peers, mm. um, you know, knew more like mm. they were more engaging they were more and i was just like what are these people talking about you know yeah. i remember in cinematography class when they talk about the technical when they speak the technical terms like f-stop a uh, shutter speed uh they knew people already knew what mm. that was mm. i didn't know what it was because mm. then it it's not something that i really like showed interest in until i got to after um, but that made me want to do it even more, you know, mm. that made me want to do it even more. And for me, it was hard, man. Like I used to take a train from Timbisa to mm. Joburg every single day. Mm. Um, and you know, with, with, it's a, that school is a, is a, is a practical school. Yeah. Like you're actually yeah. shooting yeah. and a night scene is a night scene. And mm. back then we shot on celluloid, sure. shot on film, like, mm. So it was very challenging. Yeah, it right. was very, it was very challenging. Mm, mm. Yeah. But I mean, I'm sure in hindsight, when you look at some of your classmates, the people you were working with, you've progressed, you know, beyond, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like it's a competition, but <laughs> it's, it's like, like, you know. <laughs> but I mean, I yeah. think that's also the power of, <laughs> of, of being a blank page, you know. I heard yeah. something Black Coffee spoke about. He says, you know, in the room, he does not like to be you know, the most knowledgeable person, yeah. he likes, you know, he likes to step into a room and learn, mm, you know, mm, and I think mm. perhaps that's what made you excel to the level that you're at right now Yeah, is that you were, you were absorbing, yeah. uh, you know, you had not, you know, you didn't know and <laughs> you were hungry, man. Yeah. So yeah, man, big up to that. Bro. And, um, I didn't have a second, I didn't mm. have a, a, a plan, a fallback plan. Like yeah, I had to make, you know, it, it was very expensive then. And I remember my mom saying to me that I'm done. Mm. this is it like now you gotta go fend for yourself mm. you know and i had to make it work yeah. i've never i've never worked any other job mm. this is the only thing that i know mm. you know mm. so <sighs> yeah but in hindsight were you ready you know because sometimes i mean as a kid like okay mom i'm I'm gonna make you proud, but when you step into this jungle, bro, so many vultures, and were you ready, or was it a bit of a shock when you actually stepped into the industry and got a sense of what it's really like? You know? Yeah, it mm. was it was very shocking. I'll tell you a, a, a humbling story. Yes, like sir. one of the most humbling experiences I've had in the industry is so uh, my first job was for like uh, for for another company. I was shadowing another DOP. And when the DOP left to go do another job, I'd take over as the DP. Um, the focus puller at the end of that job offered me to come and camera assist for her. Oh. And I did. Mm. Because um, what I did as when I was shadowing that DP mm. really humbled me. Mm. I saw what it, 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 it takes another form of leadership, another kind of leadership to be a DP, mm. it, it's, it's not, it's, it goes beyond mm. taking great pictures and yeah. beautiful lighting and understanding the technicalities. It's really, you, you really need to be a people's person. Yeah. You need to know how to work under pressure. You mm. need to manage time. Mm. There's a lot that goes into becoming, into being a DP mm. outside of just, you know, being exceptionally, uh, technically outstanding. You mm. Know? Mm. Funny, it means that, you know, in that experience, you must have, you, you've got the real taste of, of, yeah. you know, of what it was like. Right? Yeah. But I've experienced as well, like at times you get directors who are a bit lazy and the DP yeah. 
has to step up. You know, it's usually the DP that saves the boat, you know, that mm. saves the whole ship, mm. Mm. you know. So I'm assuming that, you know, you've, you, that's what you learned in that, in that time. Like you got no time to, to sit back in yeah. the corner and uh, you have to. But also like I saw that the film industry kind of works like any other, you know, yeah. Industry. Um, industry. Oh. Like I have to start at the bottom and work my way up. That's you it. know, I have to earn my stripes. You mm. know, um, and with earning stripes comes the most important thing, which is experience. Mm. You know, I cannot be a DP without having the experience mm. of being a DP. Mm. Of you know, of watching other people do it. Mm. You know, and coming from after, I literally all I have is theory, mm. and my own practical. Um, you know. Mm. Experience. Experience. Mm. But basically, I know nothing about the industry. Mm. You know, it might have, after might have taught me the basics, mm. but the film industry requires you to finesse, you know, and the only way to learn is for me to kind of start at the bottom and work my mm. way up. Mm. I come from that school, mm. you know. Um, yeah, I saw some of my peers yeah. become DPs way earlier than before I did. And it really didn't matter because I felt that I wasn't ready, you yeah. know. Um, and I just had to go through what I had, like... So how long was that journey, you know, yo, to eventually becoming a DP? I think this is my fourth year of DP. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting, bro. This is literally my fourth yeah. year of DP. Yeah. It, so it took five years of loading mm. being a second camera assistant mm. two years of being a focus puller mm. and operating mm. up until 2019 mm. I'll, i still operate till today yeah but um yeah it took years of mm. of watching years of absorbing mm. years of learning mm. years of watching some of my peers get ahead of me man. Ish, and, bro. I know that feeling for real. I know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I guess, I guess that's what, what, what built the confidence when you finally yeah. step into that place of leadership. Yeah. You, you're not even, you don't have any guilt about it. Nah, I don't. You take it. You, I take yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really <laughs> I take interesting, it. man. I take it. But I mean, at the time, did you have um, any DPs that you were looking up to? You yeah. Know, any cast you were like, yeah, yeah. 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 In fact, I was very fortunate to work with DPs that I looked up to, you mm. know, especially in, well, in South Africa, yeah. you know. Um, <clears throat> so one of the, one of, like, it's funny how, like, I was taught by women. Yeah. Like, the whole camera department thing, mm. I was taught by women. Um, mm. All the females in... In, in 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 the industry kind of like took me in and mm -hmm. they showed me how to work as a loader, as a focus puller, mm. and as a DP. Uh Haupi oh, yeah, yeah. is mm -hmm. one of the ladies that gave me an opportunity yeah. to Shout like, out to operate. Haupi, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On 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 some of the biggest shows in SA. Mm. Um I've operated, I've worked with her on, mm. on, on several pro on several of her projects. Yeah. Um Mr. Trevor Brown. Yes. Yeah, um Cabelo Tate, Tiane mm. uh, mm. all those guys, they just opened their doors, man. And they, yeah, I yeah. remember going to set with the set where Tiane was shooting and mm. he just chilled back and said, no, jump mm. onto the camera and operate, you know? Sure. Um, that made me comfortable behind mm. a camera, you mm. know? How was it working with uh, Trevor Brown? I haven't worked with him, but I've worked with his son. Amazing old man. And I was with the, you know, they were like, man, that guy is a, <laughs> is a library of knowledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. I've got a whole stack of, actually in my bag right now, I bumped yeah. into him not so long ago. Nice. He was taking lots of magazines, American cinematographer magazines to Cine Connect. Mm. And I, he gave me like four and he told me I must watch a couple of movies and it's like, next time I see you, Whoa. we're going to have a discussion about those movies. Mm -hmm. um, but he's, he's, he's so calm yeah, man. and he's so true to the art. Mm. Like he's one person that said, that taught me how to understand skin tone, that like mm. I need to understand the skin tone I'm lighting mm. for. Um, I need to understand the genre, like understanding is everything, you know, understanding the genre I'm filming, understanding the scene that I'm shooting, yeah. understanding the language, understanding mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. Like he, yeah, 
It's powerful. He's a whole man. Bible. You know, and it's funny because, you know, at times you hear these debates, especially with younger creatives yeah. who are like, you know, it's our time now. Put us on the spot, you know, blah, 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 blah. All this raging, you know, youthful energy to yeah. say, yo, man, put me on. But like, actually, we, we forget that we've got, you know, the other generation before us mm. who's gone through, you know, mm. every single step we're going through. What what we bringing on that's new? It's only a small part, yeah. you know what I mean. And and I know it counts a lot, uh, but you know we can't forget the knowledge and the experience of those who came before us. Yeah, because that's exactly where we lose that's it. You know, that's where we lose it, and and we tend to be a little, um, I don't know, pessimistic when it comes yeah. to our own. Yeah, you know, instead of you know giving homage to those who came before us. Yeah, so I'm really 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 glad that you were able to. You know, break bread with with the greats, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the greats made me who I am. Yes, you know? And mm. I, I come from a school where, like, it was back back in the day where mm. you were told to stay far away from the camera. You know <laughs> that. You, <laughs> you know that era know. when they tell you do not get close to that camera, stay far yeah. away from that camera. Yeah. I come from that school, mm. and it was quite refreshing coming across mm. such people that were like. Nah, mm. dog, just feel free. Get it. Mm. Get it. Do whatever it is that mm. you want to do. Mm. You know? But the difference between uh, female and male, you know, kind of mentors, because apparently, you know, the feminine energy is much more nurturing in terms yeah. of their approach on how, and, you know, us as gents, we just more like, okay, tick that box, tick that, okay, then thanks, cheers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how did you find that, you know, with some of your female? Um, I guess, I guess with the gents, it's a more of do it. Yeah. Like sure. it's a more of a do it, a do it, a do it, a do mm. it, do it, do it as many times as you can sure. in order for you to understand it. Yeah. But with the, with the ladies, it's, a, it's, it's more of mm. a, so this is why we do it. Yeah. This is, you know, yes. it's a more, it's a more of a, like a mother, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's Teaspoon. explaining. Yeah. <laughs> explaining why, explaining sure. this, explaining, you know, mm. whereas it the guys, the guys just leave you to do it. Boom. And, but they'll tell you that you're messing up. You're, sure. Stop. Now you're messing up. Sure. You know? Sure. Yeah, man. That's pretty powerful, man. But like, do you feel that the camera crew is v as valued as they should be in our industry? Like, you know, what what power do you think, you know, you guys hold in the space? And do you feel as if you're, you're being respected? Man, as, as, as filmmakers, um, we are, we are caught between like, you a rock know, and a hard place, a rock and a hard place, um, you know, because we've got to work. Mm. You know, I have to pay rent at the end of the month. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like the work has no money. Yeah. You know, but I've got to do it, you mm. know. From that perspective, I feel like we're we're not being respected, mm. you know, because we end up they 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 make ridiculous yeah. requests, you know. Um they'll make you sign a contract that says you can't work overtime. Sure. Two days into the shoot, you're being asked to work overtime. And should you not work overtime, you're the rotten apple. Sure. You know? Oh. Um have you been in that situation where you were forced yeah, to sign? So many times. We're not forced to sign it. Yeah, we sign just, it willingly, you know. It's standard. Yeah, yeah. We sign it willingly. Yeah, People no. will say, "Okay, you know, we don't pay overtime." We're like, "Okay, cool." Yeah. But then you get to work. They put you in an awkward position by yeah. saying, "Guys, please, can you help mm. us work overtime?" And you're just like, "Okay," but like you're not paying for it, and I'm not allowed to say no. Yeah, is and it, I is, should is, feel bad if no, I'm saying no. Is that standard though, or it's some production companies? It's some production companies. Yeah. It's some. It's not standard. Yeah. It's some production companies. Man, that's 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 hectic because we South Africa we are renowned for like shooting beyond schedule, yeah. like you know over squeezing like twenty scenes in a day, which is I think crazy, you know. So you're basically signing your life away. You're saying, okay, fine, abuse yeah. me, Ukraine. Yeah. You know. Um. Should you like? Uh. We're not allowed to speak. Mm. I mean, the minute you voice out a opinion or the minute you say this is against the law because mm. they do, it is. you know, they say mm. a lot of things that like, and the minute you say this is against the law, you talk too much or this or that. The minute you speak up and you're vocal about 
you're right as a crew member um you know you're hmm. cancelled yes yes yeah i know don't hire that one mm. speaks too much no isn't there a representative body that where you can kind of i mean as actors we got saga yeah. producers have ipo uh writers have the writers guild you know do you guys have a body like that that can represent your sort of like your you know your demands or yeah. like your i mean i just have my agent sure. um, at the moment um i'm not yeah i'm not so involved in the community of like mm. cinematography yeah. and um a filmmakers community mm. but like i've seen some people um mm. Mm. march to the sabc and <laughs> no bro it's not always just about marching man <laughs> you know when i think about representation you always think viva and i think that's actually that's what we need but bro that's actually what makes people not want to join these into, like oh, i'm going to be that guy yeah marching Ish. you know you know what i'm saying yeah. but anyway yeah so you've seen you've seen those uh, yeah i've seen but i've mm. i've got personal experience of mm. you know you know not adhering to what the production company wants mm. and you you label as a, a bad guy mm. troublemaker so, uh, troublemaker yeah. yeah because when i think about it even this year at the devon film mart i did not see any represents representation for you guys no yeah we had everyone south african guild of actors writers mm. guild mm. independent producers organization but i think there's there's something there you know because it's usually the one who's labeled as the bad guy you yeah. know they 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 kind of sacrifice you mm. so everyone can be scared right like you know they it's like in a slave slave uh, a cotton field that yeah. slave was just kind of they're like okay <laughs> they show everyone <laughs> you know <laughs> then you know not to kind of you know so yeah, yeah. that must have been tough actually you yeah. know uh, standing up for for yourself yeah and it's it's more so standing up for the team you yeah, know man. it's 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 as a dp i've got uh a gaffer and a gripping team that mm. i need for another five weeks mm. if you're gonna make them work three day, three hour overtime oh, on day two of 27 days Listen. what happens Ooh. to them on day 25 Yo, day what are, <laughs> <laughs> 25. Yeah. yeah so i've got to make sure that these these guys mm. uh I, i'm pacing this show yeah. nicely you know yeah got to make sure that i'm pacing yeah. the team nicely with because the schedule doesn't get any better as the show progresses you mm. know gets worse because we're dropping scenes mm. they're being added on to other days mm. can't you can't do that like it really has to come from the production company to say let's rather add more boom. time boom interesting man but i mean you know when you think about it you know um in SA we do have some amazing D- DPs but, yeah. you know but um sometimes the opportunity to create content that shows off your skill and your interest uh you know it's a, it becomes a bit rare and yeah. scarce yeah so you no know, how do you find ways to ensure you grab opportunities that show off your skill your kind of you know what you're yeah. interested in you know um so the one thing we never talk about is process like yes, i've got a process mm-hmm. you know um and my process allows me to kind of think in to always be thinking in that dimension you know in in that spectrum of thought so so when i get a script right i'll read it and i'll just have pictures i'll just my laptop's full of like mm. screen grabs from pictures from other movies mm. and i'll always make that kind of a reference mm. to <clears throat> to a certain scene that i want to do you know in the mm. show So the idea of what I want to do is by the time I get on set it's imprinted in my head. Mm. I make sure that I get on set knowing like I'm shooting an eight part series right now. I know the story from one right up till right up till the end. Oh. All I need is just the director to be like so in this scene this and this and this. Mm. I'm like oh okay I you know I know exactly what I'm doing. I've I've it's a well thought of thing. Mm. And I've learned that I need to allow the director to kind of take the lead yes, and sir. let me follow. You know, that for me, I find saves time. 
I don't have to. I don't have to figure everything. I don't mm. have to come into the scene having figured everything out. Mm. You know, mm. um, let the let the director lead, and then and you follow. I follow with mm. I, f- I follow with whatever ideas I've mm. got. You know, mm. that for me has been a lot mm. more efficient. And I don't have a back and forth with the yeah. director. I don't have a back and forth. You just with get the it director. once, boom. Yeah, and you're able to. Go Shoop, I let him go in, and then I follow. Yeah, it's, and then it's like that. Hard work versus smart work. Right? Yeah. You don't want yeah. to be the steering who's like, oh, but I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 let's do this. And then <laughs> your thing is, how can I support? You how can I that? support it? Yeah. yeah. Which is brilliant, yeah. man. Kind of knowing <clears throat> the role that you, you're playing. Yeah. You know? And as someone who comes from um, Tembisa, mm-hmm. you know, entrenched in the culture of the township, uh, I'm assuming that there could be, you know, something that's that's quite close to your heart, right? Mm. And usually we we think that someone who's in your position is just thinking technical, is not thinking narrative or anything like that. But you know, what kind of stories, what kind of stories are close to your heart uh, that you would like to tell, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, growing up in the township, mm. yeah, I've, I've, I've got lots of like... Yeah, so... T- township yeah. psychology in yeah. my head. And you come from a vibrant yeah. township. Tembisa. Tembisa is vibrant. Yeah. When we talk culture. <laughs> yes. No one, there's no theater. There's no herd yeah. in Gauteng that's got theater that's like, Tembisa. like Tembisa. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The football yeah. in Tembisa. Just <laughs> the people there, all the guys are, you know, anyway, yeah. when I when I want a cat, like <laughs> my guys are usually from Tembisa. Yeah. 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 Shout out Manjama Matunzi. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I wanna I wanna tell like stories that are very close to my heart. You know, mm. um, township psychology um, is is very different from what I experienced once I left the hood. You know, and for example, opening a car wash for somebody in the hood is a, a dream, big ambition. Yeah, it's it's yeah, a dream yeah. for me. It seems like just buying buckets, soaps, and that's <laughs> it. <laughs> but for them, it's a a, a really Big dream, you know. Um, there's also somebody like Opaisang Masuizi at the corner, yeah. who's barely making enough. But oh. I remember we used to bother those guys. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> yeah, it's five or five. Yeah. We mm. like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Um, I remember some of my peers wanted to, like, he just wanted to be a taxi driver. Like, it's oh. like. If I can just be a taxi driver, mm. I'll be cool. I'll, mm. I'll be I'll be fine. I'll be okay. Mm. Um, how we used to speak about football, like how everybody just wanted to become a football, a football player, superstar. Know, yeah, 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 and not just any football oh. football superstars, oh. man. George Maluleka is from my hood, and yes, like everybody till today still mm. looks. There's a bunch that looks up to that guy, mm. and there's so many other soccer players that play professionally that are from the hood. But one that's very one that I know is. Mm. It's George Mali, like because we come from the same hood. Yeah, you know? man. Um, mm. yeah. So those are like touching stories that, like, you know, we see every day that I've experienced personally. That I believe mm. most people. Where is DSTV? DSTV is in the hood, bro. And That's if true. we put those stories on DSTV, Boy. those are the people that will resonate with the stories. So I would like to start a company that kind of talks about township culture. Mm. I think we really do need that, man. Yeah. Because we're getting a sense now that, like, our culture... I mean, it's a good thing, you know, with my piano that's coming out and it's becoming more global. Um, but what's going to... What what eventually happens in such situations is mm. that we, we get a, a blanket culture. Yeah. You know, sort of like, you know, a kid from Timbisa looks, feels, sounds like a kid like, from LA. Yeah. A kid from LA looks, feels, sounds like a kid from Mexico. Singer. It's like, you know, where's the individuality? Mm. And I mm. think... You know, post ninety four, um, you know, and before, you know, let's say before maybe twenty ten or so, we had a very strong sense of so, self. self yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so self image yeah. was quite strong yeah. with people like DJ Kabzela, you know, you know, cats who were like really repping our local culture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I grew up, mm. um, I mean, I smoked cigarettes. Yeah. I couldn't stand at the corner mm. and smoke cigarettes mm. because I'm afraid, Jorge, who's going to rock? Mm. Anybody will get out of that taxi. It could be my mother's friend. <laughs> it could be their neighbor. It yeah. could be anybody yeah. that comes out of that taxi. True. Man, I used to take the train to school. Do you know what happens in the train yes. in the morning? Yeah. 
A whole, an entire church service mm. happens in there. A mm. beautiful church service yeah, no. happens in the train on the way to school. Mm. So like with the loss of the township culture, mm. we're going to lose so much more than township culture. So like they, we lose the respect mm. that, mm. you know, that came with it. Mm. We lose the unity that came mm. with it. I, like I, 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 I can't see myself going to ask a neighbor for sugar now. Yeah, that's true. You know, mm. that's the township culture mm. that we're losing. We're using the essence of you our know, humanity. We're using the essence yeah. of our humanity. Just like, mm. I can't reprimand my sister's kids. Mm. Mm. You know, mm. I, I can't do that. But I was reprimanded by my neighbors who didn't even know who my mother was. Just because I'm a young kid walking in the streets and that's being disrespectful. That, and I would listen and I would respect. Boom. But with, with, with that culture going, mm. if we do not preserve that culture of the hood, mm. of the township culture, if we lose it, we lose so much more. We, we lose a lot. I mean, just just midweek, so my mm. business partner and I were having, you know, we have these regular meetings and um, we just popped into a restaurant in uh, Bromfontein. And these kids are in school uniform. Yeah. They've got a whole bub uh, hubbly, they, they just got a <laughs> bottle of Hennessy. I'm like, and you know, we're forced to sit next to them because it's not, I'm like, man, this, yeah, I'm asking yeah, these kids yeah. like, no, we just want to enjoy our lives, man. Yeah. Like we just finished writing and I can't reprimand them. You, That's can't. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you're can't. overstepping <laughs> and coming from where we come from. Yeah. There's no way, mm. especially in uniform, mm. you'd be that no kid, way. you know, Chilling like you, some millionaire who's made it popping bottles. Mm, <laughs> you know always, always. Yeah, no, it's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, so I really, really, really respect that. You know, I've yeah. always, always want us to, you know, focus on preserving our culture. Mm. You know, do you think that we are seeing enough of those stories? I don't think we are. Well, they're not presented in that way. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really can't explain it, but mm. it's almost as if they're just on the surface, mm. you know? Um, I mean, we're very quick to talk about social ills, you know? We're very quick to yeah. talk about the drug abuse, the alcoholism, the, mm. the, 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 but we don't talk about the disrespect, the disconnect, mm. the, you, you know, the, the, what's separating us, our generation from, you know, the now generation, mm. you know? Like, we're not talking about those issues because mm. I feel those are, much bigger, hmm. you know. If 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 I can't respect my mother, that's, true. that's a bigger that's a bigger issue. Mm. That's because that's that's the root of everything. That's the foundation, mm. you know. If if I can't pass on the foundation I had to the next kid, mm. that's still that's the problem. Mm. But then, which boils down to the question of mentorship on yeah. a, on a personal level, you know? Are you kind of bringing in young cats, you know, young creatives, um, you know, to kind of show them the way and, you know, is, do you, how do you vet them? How do you kind of see if this, this is the kind of kid that I want to yeah. put next to me? Um, cause I'm sure your journey has been difficult yeah. to get to where you are. I mean, my journey has been very difficult and, um, I had to, I had to show, charismatic commitment mm. to, to, you know, to, to put it for mm. lack of better words, like my commitment to this craft has been very charismatic. You know, um, I was very committed to where I want to get to, mm. you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a matter of, I need to become a DP. It, it, it meant I needed to be the best I am at that time. So whether I'm a camera assistant, That's it. I needed to be the best. Mm. Whether I'm a focus puller, I needed to be the best. Whether I'm a production assistant, mm. I need to be the best at what I do mm. at that time. Mm. That's how that's how committed I was to getting to. And I I really don't think I've reached the peak of of my career, mm. but yeah, I've definitely reached another milestone. You know, mm. so my I've brought in a couple of people and um. I always work from a point of commitment. How committed are you to this? What have you done to show that you're committed to the course? Mm. You know? Um, so I want somebody who, like I'll ask basic questions. Do you have somebody that you look up to? Mm. Do you have a favorite cinematographer? 
um, do you know rental companies? What is your favorite camera lenses? You know, let's talk, let's talk about the basics of wanting to become a cinematographer. Mm. You know, what is what's what kind of lighting do you want? You know, like mm. what commitment have you shown? And then I work it from there. And so when I came in, battery, there's a thing, you know, this camera batteries. Yeah. Um, so on, on other sets, like there's batteries for, in the camera department, there's mm. batteries for all sorts of things. Mm. Um, battery duty. That's a, it's a simple task, right? Just mm. to make sure that we never have flat batteries or mm. we never run out of power for any piece of equipment. Mm. Just that little responsibility. You need to, I, like, I need to see your commitment. Mm. I need to see you labeling the, 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 the batteries there saying, okay, this is battery one, battery two, or giving them names or mm. something, knowing which battery is flat, which one mm. is full because some don't have, you can't see them there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I I work from a level of commitment mm. and I need to see like what, how committed are you to the course? Kind of reminds me of this quote. It says, how you do one thing tells how you do everything. Yes. Yeah. So you you choose the young guys based on, on you. Yeah. So you, you're able to vet. And yeah. I generally work with young guys, man, because... I believe um, young guys now are more informed, like with the AIs and all that Oof. stuff. They are more informed. The flying, man. Yeah, yeah, the flying, the flying. I was, yeah, man. I was. Um, so I passed by my old college, um, the Market Theatre Laboratory, um, sometime last week, and I walked into a performance by one of the students, and I'm just surprised at the level. Mm -hmm. The level is way higher than where we were at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like he can dance toe to toe with me. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the that's the power of youth right now. You yeah. know, it's like they're hungry. They're hungry. Then they're, they're not apologetic. Yeah. You know, they want to do it, and they know they've got great ideas. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think it's important to kind of, as much as we say, learn from from those collaborate who can, yeah, collaborate with, with yeah. these cats. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because you know only magic can come from there. But like from a technical point of view you know uh, we've have a lot of resources in this country um, budgets aside you know we've got access to so many cameras lighting setups camera accessories to play with yet sometimes the quality for some reason it just doesn't add up uh what do you think is holding us back uh from reaching that international quality which i don't think we're too far from yeah. but, you know at times we kind of what, what do you think what's that Thin line at times we... Um, I think we are... I think we can easily match international standards. Awesome. You know? The, 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 the problem is that we're not talking about the process. We're not sharing our processes. Mm. Um, we're not sharing um, our ideas. Yeah. You know? Um, our unity... I feel like our unity in the industry... It's still a bit on the surface. Mm. And we're not being true to the stories that we're trying to tell. Mm. You know, if a story was made was, was in 1996, mm. it happened in 1996. We need to recreate the world. Mm. Right. And I can't write a script that was recreated in 1996 and not match up to that story. Mm. You know, I have to live up to what is written. And that's one thing that's holding us back. Mm. It's the compromises based on the financial constraints. I wouldn't even call them financial constraints. No. I don't know what they are. Mm. But we compromise the very most important of the elements. Mm. But, but do you think also we're not having enough conversations as as DPs, as mm. cinematographers, mm. as you know, m one of my visions for the show is for us to start having roundtable round conversations. You know, uh, and you meet your <clears throat> your your peers and your colleagues, mm. those who are way ahead and those mm. who are way behind. Mm. Um, you know, in terms of experience, um, and obviously, you know, just to get a sense of of process and yeah. and I think these conversations will be able to set a standard. Yeah. To say sure. You know, you know what the telenovela, because it's a new culture, mm. it's a new culture that's coming in now. Mm. Um, DPs are now going to set without having read scripts, sure. without having prepped. Mm. You know, and I mean it's understandable. Mm. Like I can prep for the first ten episodes, but mm. more than Yo, that, man. like I can't prep for episode one hundred and forty-five, man. True. Like that's, and I'm it's it's a nine to five. Mm. 
Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. But a telenovela still works like any other film. It's shot on location. Mm. It's, you know, mm. it's, it's not a studio. Mm. They say it's a studio, but it's a, it's a house. It's a house. It's a location, mm. you know? But, but, but I think we need to be honest about the audience that watches telenovelas. Because that audience member is from work, it's tired, probably just cooked or just got takeaways. Mm. They just want to sit in front of the TV. They don't care. <laughs> D.O.P. <laughs> Yo, man, I just, you know, is this guy going to kiss that girl or not? What are they going to do? Yeah. Boom, boom. For the audience, it, it doesn't sleep, matter. You know, yeah. For the audience, it doesn't matter. Mm. It matters for me because mm. that's my colleague. Yeah, the DP on that show is my colleague. And... He's gonna. He he's calling me. He's hitting me up, wanting to collaborate with me. Mm. But you look at that. You like. But I look at that, and I'm like, how do I then collaborate with mm. this artist? Mm. You know, because our processes are not the same. That's not true. Our processes are not the same. So we're not unified in any way. You know, like we're not. But also, my process is not. I'm not saying I've shot some telenovelas, and I'll, they'll call me last minute to come, and I'll, I'll just mm. wake up in the morning and go there. Yeah. And I treat it like that. You know, sometimes you do say, ah, oh, fuck it. Yeah. Like, this is how I it just, is. Like, I'm not going to be, because I've, I've been that guy who walks in the room. <laughs> over, overly pro- yeah, prepared. Yeah, overly prepared. And, and you get there. And, and sometimes, like, good toilet, sometimes you stand out and you become subject to like, oh, oh, we put it over the I'll show him. <laughs> The last thing you want to be yeah. is a smart kid and for, you know, so yeah, no, it's interesting dynamic, mm. but I think those conversations are so important. They're very important. Mm. They're very important. Even though a telenovela is, is a studio and the audience doesn't care, mm. the process should still apply. You mm. know, we're artists at the end of the day. Man. And there is no form of art if mm. there is no process. Mm. I, do, I don't believe like mm. artists, uh, you know, the art just comes out. No, no. there has to be a process. Mm. You know, um, mm. for you to get that painting right, mm. you have to take your time while painting it. Mm. You know, mm. if you do not have the process, then mm. you. But like, do you feel there's a way in which production companies can standardize process? I'll give an example. I was working in a soapy, like a decade ago or something, but it was an African soapy, and their thing was in the morning. All the actors must come before we shoot. There's a rehearsal room. Mm -hmm. You must have come, prepared your lines. The whole cast is watching your scene. You know, the director blocks it. Ta, 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 ta. Cheers, bye. Next one. Whether you shoot at four o'clock or six o'clock in the evening, you must be there half past seven for rehearsal. So do you think there's a way in which, you know, the actual production company can standardize to say, okay, fine, you know, before we work, you know, there's a way to vet whether or not you've, You've prepped for for that. Yeah. Mm. Um, we we it's I do it for myself, you know, mm. and I've 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 made I've made sure that I have to read the script and I have to do a treatment and I have to sit with the directors um and discuss my treatment and their treatments and then we merge the mm. treatments together, right? But I feel like every member, mm. especially as a creative head, like <clears throat> the editor, mm. you know. Um, everybody needs to be in that conversation. Yeah. It's not just me, you know. Everybody needs to kind of understand where we are heading in with the with the vision. Mm. When we're having those meetings, mm. you know, I don't think because at sometimes you you'll find that the scene works, but the wardrobe not quite. Mm. Why is that? It's because they were not involved in hearing each other. The Yeah, the vision, the entire okay. vision, you know. Um, what's happening again with the telenovelas is that editors just come and they edit, 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 edit. There's no longer reading what the continuity is saying, you know. And then you shoot something very nice, but you see it on TV and it's just a horrible thing. And now we're not like productions are saving money by not allowing us DPs to come and supervise um, the post-production or oversee the the, the post-production, you know, the the grade especially. Mm. I don't I don't care so much for the edit. Mm. That's a more 
a director's thing. Mm. I allow them to like, because it's their story, you know, it's like let them tell mm. the story. The shots are there. Mm. But let the them grade, tell the, story. Your, your the grade is, mm. that's my picture. You know, I'm the director of that picture. Mm. You know? So <clears throat> now, yeah, without mm. even reading the script, the editor will also grade. Mm. Without reading my treatment, how do you grade something that I treated? Mm. How do you, as an editor, so grade something that I treat, I treated without even just a mere call mm. to say, yo, man, I'm doing this. So, so from what I can pick up, I mean, this is, shoo, this is, these are huge nuggets for me, man. So the missing link is actually being able to discuss the process with your colleagues so there can be a, a, a shared vision yeah. that we know we're attacking. Mm. That's, that's, that's really, really true, man. And when we're filming also, it's that open conversation. Pella, the process also, we need to allow this process to filter into the filming as well because yeah. there's pre-prod. In pre-prod, we start the conversation. In filming, we carry on with the conversation. Mm. You know, it's, it's because like, yeah, everybody goes through their own problems um, during the shooting process. But I feel like if we talk about our problems, mm -hmm. if I'm struggling to get this kind of a prop, mm -hmm. let me talk about it. Yeah, if I'm struggling to get the look, let me talk about it. Mm. You know, if the director is struggling with the blockings, if, if, if struggling with the performance of the actors, mm. let's talk about it. Mm. You know, it shouldn't be, mm. yo, horrible acting. Mm. Oh, mm. oh, that DP is horrible. Mm. It shouldn't be that. Yeah, like, man. we really need to be more open as creatives to one another, especially when we're working on the same project. So true. You right know? now, there's a lot of emphasis on preserving your mental health, making sure, you know, and I see so many times on sets, everyone's stress levels is here. Mm. Director mm. stress just because they can't talk to the DP, man. Yo, man, that sucks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think these conversations you're talking about are going to yeah. really help us in terms yeah. of, you know, because man, we walk out of these projects really well, like, yeah. oh, I'm so glad I'm done with yeah. that. And then you go into another one. You and you, you, I mean, you, you can't walk out of a production feeling like you're carrying the whole production. Mm -mm. Because, you know, the minute I can't speak about, like, if I think, okay, ish, mm. I mean, the director could have blocked the scene a bit better mm. just to accommodate my lighting. Mm. If I can't have that conversation, who's getting frustrated? Because mm. it's me that's getting frustrated. Because yeah. I go to bed and I get those screen grabs and I'm like, look at how horrible the scene is. I oh, can't yeah. sleep at night. Uh -huh. Well, he got his blocking and all. But if we call it, if I talk and say, look, man, um, just this kind of blocking is going to make my lighting a little bit difficult. Can I make a suggestion? Mm. You know? Mm. And you've given him a choice to say yes or no. If he mm. says no, then you know, okay. Mm. It's all good. Let it go. It's all good. But I mean, now, you know, on the show, we've we've spoken about time. We've spoken about development, like generally in our, in our episodes, mm. you know, being a big issue, uh, you know, putting in the time for development, developing a story properly, making sure that foundation is nice and strong, um, you know, but we don't have much of a development phase in this country. Um, it hasn't been something that's been emphasized, although I do find that some of the government agencies are trying yeah. to put in money, especially for independent producers, you know, to say, here's something that you can spend time to develop um, this work. Um, you know, a lot of our content is made quickly, you know, yeah. with barely enough time to plan and breathe and just, just kind of see it from every angle, you know, mm. unless you have the privilege to do so, you yeah. know. Um, but now how does this trickle down to cinematography, you know, the, the development process? Is there is there like a link and do you think yeah. is a way, because we are talking about, you know, process and conversation um how does it trickle down i mean we'll, we'll speak about um how to achieve the best way to film a scene we'll speak about the best way to do this we'll speak about the most efficient way of 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 filming mm. you know the most efficient the most quickest way mm. of filming you know but then it comes to the resources. Mm. 
you know, I already don't have enough time. I already don't have enough resources. Hmm. Um, there is active, there's like daily stuff that happens, you know, from time to time that just wastes time on set. Everything just ends up being an us problem, the yeah. on-set crew problem, mm. you know? Mm. Everything that happens outside of set ends up becoming the on-set. Yeah, well, I know even Post gets some of that because they have to deal with the footage that mm. we, you know, we shot with less time and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, less resources. We don't have time. We don't, um, they, we can't afford to have the necessary resources to shoot efficiently. Um, so let's say ideally, you know, how would it look? Let's say the time was there, the money was there. What would that process be where like, you know, when we're in development phase, how would you like to oh. marry that? You know, uh, how, how would it look? <clears throat> I think interrogating the story mm. for as long as possible mm -hmm. as creatives, mm -hmm. You know, having to interrogate that story makes it so much easier to interpret it. Mm. You know, from from a technical point of view, from a directing point of view, from from all the other departments, makeup, wardrobe. If we sit down all together and we interrogate the story, mm. why does this happen? Why does that happen? Mm. How does this happen? Mm. Why? What's the relationship between this and that? Sure. What's you know. We don't understand the story because we don't interrogate it enough. Mm. You know, we don't have time to interrogate it. Mm. Um, that that for me is the beginning. Let's make time to sit down as creatives to interrogate mm. the story. So I was <clears throat> watching an, another interview on a different podcast, and they were interviewing, a, a, you know, quite a you know, um, South African directors doing very well at the moment. Mm. And he was talking about how in his process, he makes sure that he sets aside three weeks mm. of rehearsal just for his actors. It's a standard, mm. you know? And I think that's where, that's the magic, right? Yeah. Like where you set aside time, even if there isn't, I always believe like, you know, I've, you know, when you read these business books and they're like, you know, just especially as an entrepreneur, your thinking must be, I have to make provision for this as yeah. opposed to, I don't have money. Yeah. So, okay, I'm coming back. I'm going to hustle. <laughs> I'm going to make provision for this. You know what I mean? It's not like we need extra 10 million for, for, yeah. for that, but I think we need to put it aside in our minds. It's okay, guys, we're going to have to have this process. Yeah. And let's see, because that process is probably will save us a lot of a money. A lot of money. That's the process. Is gonna, money. You know what I mean? And, and, and I'm, I'm assuming as an independent producer, you'll be able to sell your product at, at the right yeah. amount because it's crisp. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't get paid for the time I do to do treatments mm. and read scripts. Yeah. I get paid for the week mm. or two weeks of reikis and I, I do not get, but it's my level. Once again, it's my level of commitment to mm. my craft. I cannot start shooting without not having read the script. Mm. I cannot start without having treated the story. I mean, there's so much happening in this industry um, and there's a lot to celebrate. And at times there's a lot to look at and say, okay, we could correct this, that, and the third. But for you, what are some of the highlights? What, what gets you excited? What gets you, you know, it's keeping you, you know, to, it's making you, you know, to keep on moving yeah. and keeping on <clears throat> and keeping that. What, what are these? Yeah, I, th yeah, I think... I you know, the institutions are trying their best to kind of like come up with great content. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm looking at Mzanti Magic, Showmax, mm -hmm. ETV with the EVOD, yeah, Netflix South Africa is here now. Um, mm -hmm. All these platforms are just like really showing up. It's more work for us. It's more stories to tell. Oh. I think we're heading, we're going somewhere mm -hmm. with, with all these platforms. Um Mm. And just how the young people are not afraid to express themselves, you mm. know, like um, I've, I've, I've taken some, a, a lot of my courage I get from, um, you know, my focus puller, like I work with him consistently, shout out to Tools. Yes, sir. Um, he, he's just so expressive, man, like mm. unashamed and 
not afraid to get things wrong, mm. you know? Um, and that's how artists should mm. be. Let's not be afraid to make mistakes, you know? Um, let's just be more expressive, mm. you know? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm enjoying right now, man, mm. is that we're more expressive. We're not afraid of getting things wrong. There's more, there's more opportunities, mm. you know, with the platforms. Mm. And it's just, it's a bright future ahead for our industry. Mm. Funny, um, you know, a colleague was saying to me how a person like Ava DuVray yeah. was, the first film she made was not too great. Yeah. But because they had the space to make those mistakes, you know, and, and I think we are slowly moving to a point where we have the freedom to make the, the mistakes. Mm. But one thing my producer, you know, did mention, um, you know, on, um, you know, she's got this YouTube page, um, you know, where she just puts her thoughts about the industry. And she was like, the problem is in South Africa, yes, we've got all these platforms, but it makes it difficult to access some of the content, you know, like you just saw a film that's way over there at Evard. And I'm like here playing with Showmax, Netflix. Yeah. And then there's someone, you know, now there's Disney, you know. So yeah. do you think there's a way in which we can, I don't know how, because I know these are all com companies that are competing. Yeah. But just kind of standardize Merge, a package yeah. where you say, okay, you can get this, that, that, and the third. Mm. And, you know. You know, I don't think there's a way, but I think with time, mm. a way will eventually come because mm. I think every, every one of these content, um, all these platforms, they eventually need to come and work together. They have to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eventually they're going to have to come mm -hmm. and work together. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a time thing. Mm -hmm. That is really a time thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm also surprised at how ignorant some, I mean, you know, especially middle-class families who, um, black families, because yeah. that's, those are the people <laughs> I'm, you know, exposed to. But I was talking to, my cousin is actually my uncle, but he's a young, cool guy. And his wife, this weekend at my grandfather's funeral, mm. and they were like, how much is Netflix? I'm like, whoa, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are earning such good money. You're paying so much for your multi. You have no idea. When I told them how much it is, they couldn't believe how cheap it is yeah. and why they wasted so, so much. much money. Yeah, people. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I think, you know, people also need to be educated. <laughs> about that. It was crazy. But now we, we, we're jumping to a very exciting segment of our show, which is the game time. Mm. The name of the game is called Either Or. I give you two similar options and you take your pick. So we just want to, you know, kind of gorge your taste. Um, it's basically an adaptation of who do, who, who do you rather? It's, an, you know, another game. Mm. Film or digital? Film. Oh, why? I was taught to shoot on film and film is forever, man. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Sony or Harry? Harry. Oh, <laughs> okay, reason being? Um, I just enjoy the color space of Ari. Okay. Yeah. Gives more yeah. options than. Uh... I mean, Sony is just as good. Mm. Um, but like with the recent camera, I mm. think the Sony Venice is the one that um, I think the color spacing of it is, 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 is dope. Very interesting. Um, but Sony, since the. I mean, Ari, since the Ari Classic. Mm. It's just been consistent. It's brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Prime lens or zoom lens? Primes. <laughs> Why, bro? <laughs> yeah. uh, primes, because they have a look of their yeah. own, um, you know, yeah. depth of field. Mm. They, they don't breathe. Mm. Like, you've got options. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm, interesting. Okay, that's one. I think I know which one you'll say, but let's see. Night shoots or day shoots? Night shoots. What? I thought you'd say day shoots. <laughs> why? why night shoots? It's just better to I enjoy lighting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same here. That's why we shoot most of yeah. all our episodes. I enjoy evening. the lighting at night. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Okay, so you got you got a, you got the man, a man who sleeps a lot. Nah. <laughs> I even insist that yeah. I don't do day for night. I don't black out. For real? Yeah. Sure, I thought you'd say day. Okay. Hmm... This one is interesting. Kings of Joburg season one or Kings of Joburg season two. <laughs> yeah, Shout season out to two. my man, Samad Davis. <laughs> yeah. Season two. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Purely because I worked on it. Yeah, man. Yeah, crisp. <laughs> and stuff, man. 
Telenovelas or soapies? Oof. Tough one, dude. Can I add or series? Series. Series. Telenovelas or soapies? Yeah. <laughs> I'd say telenovelas, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because my significant other always. Uh, yeah. It's our bonding them. time. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. how we bond at home. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting, man. Yeah, yeah. So you guys, okay. Interesting. Um, streaming or broadcast TV? Streaming. Reason being? Um, it's accessible for me at any time. You know, like, it's, it's, the, it's a now thing, man. Yeah, no. It's a now thing. It's oh. a now thing. Um, um, I guess with streaming, like, the only reason I don't have, like, cable dstv dish and stuff i've only got wi-fi at home yeah. and i choose to watch what i want when i want so you know, there's no schedule i don't follow any schedule of you know yeah i just so prefer that i think it makes life so much easier so much right? life yeah so much easier, bro. Alrighty, keeping up with the candy sammies or how to win christmas was a two South African productions. I hope you know at least one of them. I know how to ruin Christmas. Okay. Yeah, well, I found I found it very. Can funny. I tell you something? Actually, you yeah. you don't know. Keeping up with the Candice Emmys, yeah. Candice Emmys is the highest grossing South African film. Really? More than Leon Schuster. Really? Boom. So do your research. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When it comes to theater, it's <laughs> interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's very yeah, interesting. It's a film. It's a it's a it's an Indian family film. You know. Oh, oh, and I saw it's on Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they recently did a licensing deal. Yeah. But in terms of cinema tickets, they're the highest grossing. Wow. Yeah. But I mean, I, I think that's also testimony, you know, it's, it's, you know, to the power of tapping into these markets. Mm. Like, I think we've only hit the surface when we talk about mm. tapping into the vendor market. Yeah. You know, the Tonga market, Bape, you know, um, and they tapped into the Indian market. A market that people just think worked out. Which director, anywhere in the world, would you like to work with? Anywhere? Bona. Bona. (laughs) Lima Puto. Where, bro? (laughs) Brazil, where, man? New York, LA, what? (laughs) I would say Eva. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. I think I will never get over the brilliance of when they see us. Yeah, man. I'll never ever get that kind of storytelling. Um, it brought so much emotion to me. That's true. You know. Um, and to this day, I I still look at that show, and I'm. It's also shot by one of my favorite DPs, Black Bradford Young, mm. Black American. Um, Bradford Young. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I mean. That's just exceptional work, man. Mm. It's a, it was a heavy series emotionally. Mm. And I think for me, that's my kind of storytelling, mm. you know? I mean, at some point, you're just walking in the street, you read an article, and you just have a sense of hate. Like, it, mm. it evokes such strong emotion. That's the kind of filmmaking mm. I want to do, you know? Like, I really want to find myself shooting stuff that evoke very strong emotions, mm. you know, in people. Mm. I'm sure, like, yeah. you felt angry at some point. Ooh. You felt sad at some yeah. point. And, and it, to, to the extreme, yeah. you know? Especially when watching When They See Us. Yeah. All those emotions. All those emotions. And, and when you mention about the process that you feel we should incorporate, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. they went through those processes. They went through the process. Because that thing was... Married. I've seen mm. some South African work, you know, and obviously it's given that, you know, we don't have as much experience in some yeah. of these things, but you're like, this is dangerous to, to, yeah. to tap into such a, a difficult conversation yeah. and you just treat it recklessly. You just yeah. treat it like, okay, this is what the, the writer wrote. DPU come do your thing. And, and, and it's not yeah. what you're saying where it's yeah. like a, a marriage of ideas, a symphony of ideas, you know, and we, I think when they see us, that's what you see, you know. Mm. Um, yeah, so another director that I'd like to work with locally is Jamil. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, that guy's a brave director. He's a genius. Um, he's broken so many 
boundaries. Mm. Um, I think his work is just, his style of filmmaking is something that we fear mm. as, as South African filmmakers, you know, mm. that level of hard work is, mm. is feared. We don't mm. see it a lot. Like, I think before even the Shagas and all these other big productions, yeah. Jamil has just, his work is, I just found it so attractive. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's, um, shout out to Jamil Kubeka, man. He's, he's someone that we really, really, you know, um, yeah. should exonerate and, you know, mm. and hopefully we'll have him at the show soon, Jamil. <laughs> What's your all time South African film and why? All time South African film. <clears throat> There's quite a couple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you love your local film, yeah. Yeah, I love my local films. Uh, Mapanzula. Oh, shout out Oliver Schmidt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I recently went to watch it again yeah. in Rosebank. Um, How was that? How was I think it? they restored it to 4K. It's yes, brilliant yeah. still. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant still. Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. Toti. Um, <clears throat> mm. Mm. Nah. Yeah, and Zulu on my stoop for some reason. Weird. Okay. <laughs> uh, the first three, I understand because of your your strong connection with township culture. culture. Yeah. You know, it makes sense. And Zulu on my stoop is a classic, man. Mm. A classic. So, Dan, thank you so much, brother, mm -hmm. uh, for this enlightening conversation. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, this is a conversation that. It brings forward issues and con topics around, you know, technical crew and how you view the industry from your perspective, you know. It's going to really help us to improve the system that we're trying to impact. So thank you for that, brother. And um, we definitely would like to have you here again. We want to expand on these conversations. We know that you're working on exciting projects um, and we really would love a window into your world. Um, so, uh, you know, to the beginning of a great relationship and uh, may, we, may we continue uh, working with you and uh, seeing you more in this country. Uh, thank you. It's been a pleasure being here. Bless you all. We'd like to thank Fortune Well, the Dynamic Workspaces, as well as the Magic Lightbox Company for sponsoring this episode. Make sure you like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for following us.